He's good, amen. He's so good. Yeah. Let's give him some praise or something, man. Can we just, yeah? Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Amen. It's good to be in this house, but it's better to be locked eyes with him. Amen. <laughs> I love that. It's so, so cool. Thank you all so much. Um, man, this morning we, we have... Uh, Something very different to do today, and uh, man, he's good, amen? amen? Like, isn't his presence just the best? Healing. So good. Man, I'm, I'm, I'm just <laughs> a little, little punch drunk right now. <laughs> <laughs> One too many shots from Holy Spirit, that's okay, that's all good. Man, this morning, um, I'm really excited. Raquel and I are, are really excited. We've been talking about this, and there's just so many things that, that are, that are kind of going on and transpiring. Um, a couple of things to get out of the way, announcement-wise, real quick. Um, um, you know, I don't know if you noticed, but Ryan and Adrian are about to have a baby. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and uh, not to be rude or ugly or nothing like that at all, but um, no hugs, just give them their distance. They're trying to make sure that there's no chance of any kind of COVID or any symptoms either, because um, if there's even any symptoms, then the hospital goes berserk. And uh, how many of y'all, I mean, you don't want her to have that baby and to not be able to hold it, right? Yes. And that's what would happen. Basically, they'd kind of quarantine them off. So, um, uh they would probably say it nicer than what I just did, but basically just stay back. Don't get offended if they don't hug. They're not going to hug right now. They're going to, you know, they're, uh, they're trying to play it out by ear as far as still coming and being around before all that happens. So, uh, uh, yeah, they're family. We love y'all, but we don't, we want to respect that, right? Amen. 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 Yeah. Um, and I don't know whatever their other announcements. I have no idea. I don't even, I don't even know. I can't, I'm so out of it at the moment. <laughs> so funny, man. It's so good. Uh, don't start. <laughs> Roger, take your mom and y'all go sit in the back. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I am so kidding. Y'all know that. I just, it's so powerful just who and how he is with us. And I'm, I'm just blown away. So we do have some folks joining us on Zoom. And so, man, welcome. Uh, you know, this morning is going to be a little different. Uh, I'm going to share some scripture with you, with you real quick. We are going to keep the kids with us for just a little bit. Um, just bear with us. Look, they don't bother me. I mean, yeah, if they're running around uh, like that. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I'm just kidding. It's going to be fine. It's going to be okay. Don't, don't worry. We're going to, dad's still moving. Holy Spirit doesn't freak out, right? and leave or anything like that. But um, there are so many things happening around us. Uh, and, and, and the beautiful thing is, is that we are a body that's connected. And how many of you know, um, if you stub your toe, you, you feel that in your brain. Like you, you, your brain says, hey, there's some pain there, right? Or uh, you ever heard, I know my grandpa used to say, if you hurt your foot, he'd say, here, let me punch you in the stomach so you forget about your foot, <laughs> right? It's because you're all connected and everything. The beautiful thing about the body of Christ is that we are connected right, like that. We are. But here's the thing, something I realized the other day is that there's so many things coming out of all of you that I get to hear it when I get to chat with you, but I don't get to spend a lot of time with everybody individual and we don't you don't get to get that with each other either it's very minuscule when you look at the entire body right does that make sense i mean look if everybody went over to enjoy john's awesome burgers and to hear what god's doing in their heart that would be what one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen 15, 16, 16 different nights just represented right here if that was one family a night that came to hear them. Um, John can't cook that much that fast. 
No, he probably can. But you see what I mean? It's a little, it's, it's, it, it's not real feasible, right, to, to, to get together like that. And so I started doing some digging because I've been hearing for this last year about the word that we use for church, which is ecclesia. It's the Greek word ecclesia. And do you know what? I, I, I mean, I heard this all throughout the year, but I didn't really get to dig into it until earlier this week. But the word ecclesia does not actually mean church. It doesn't actually mean church like what we're thinking. Oh, let's go to church. Hey, y'all going to church tomorrow? It, it doesn't mean that whatsoever. And so we're going to dive into that. Just for I'm going, to, I'm going to take about 10 minutes to share some scripture with you and some definitions. And then we're going to hear from you, if you're willing. You don't, you know, no forcing except those of you that I ask. You have to. No choices. No options. Um, does that make sense? We're going to open this up today for everyone to share, if you're willing and you want to share just what God's doing, what you feel he's going to do. Listen, we're going to be very strategic this morning, and we're not going to testify about all that's been happening and all that. That's, that's for the living room and another time. And we're not going to, as much as many of y'all heavy hitters want to prophesy over everything that moves um, we're not going to prophesy over things today after service by all means. Uh, but I want to lay this out, have, I'll, I'll give some better explanation in just a little bit and, uh, we'll get the understanding from the whole body and then we'll move forward. And then whatever can happen can happen. If they crash in the wall like that over there, it's okay. <laughs> all right. So, um, so we're going to keep the kids in here just for a little bit. Um, we're not going to take long today. Ties and offerings. Um, you know, we have the online app to give, and Sarah can help you with that a whole lot. Um, yeah, I will mess it up. Sorry. Um, we also, um, you know, I want you to think about something. Uh, for a lot of years, I have said how, you know, Raquel and I, we don't take a salary. And, and we used to say that from a poverty mindset, actually. That the church was so poor, we did so bad that we just, no, no, we're not going to do that to the church. And we had a mind shift the other day as we realized, you know, we, we weren't really doing it from that standpoint. Uh, we don't take a salary and we, we give because we believe in you as core church. We believe in what's going on. We are sowing our money into this place because of what's going on, but because of what's about to happen. And we are full on believing for greater things. It's been a great year, hasn't it? Yes. You know, we were with someone the other night and they started to, to pray for us. And um, they made this statement. They said, you know, let's just ask Holy Spirit what he's going to say to pray for. And then they started praying this stuff and it was not on at all. They started praying about this tormenting spirit over Raquel and I and all this uh, the fog of war and all this and it's tormenting and tormenting and all this stuff. And I was like, whoa, that is, uh-uh, ex nay. Shandai and shakalaka. <laughs> now, the brother didn't, he didn't mean anything bad by it at all. He missed it. And that is perfectly okay. I didn't punch him in the face. I didn't. What I really felt in my spirit was he's praying out of his issue. And so I just pulled a Doug Addison and I flipped it and I flipped it good. And I just began to pray uh, that all of the grace that has been on us this year, all of the movement that dad has done, all of the stuff that's been happening here with you at core, that it would fall onto them, that it would just flow through their life. It would flow through their church. It would just begin to overwhelm and overflow them. And the thing is, is we've had some struggles and we've had some bumps to get through, but it's been a great year, church. I mean, it has been amazing. You know, there's a few people out today, and numbers don't matter per se, right? We don't look at it as that. We just want to have an encounter with the Father and infiltrate the kingdom here uh, in, the air, in the community around us. And so today we're going to hear about that because, man, it's just been a good year. It's been amazing. Um, and I'm excited for what, is the, what the future holds. So with that, turn with me real quick. This is going to be down and dirty. 
Matthew chapter 16. Um, if I remember correctly, I believe this is actually the first mention of the word church that was written into our English uh, versions. Um, because in the Greek, it's not there. Matthew uh, 16. Let me know when you're there. I know they're going to put it on the, uh, on the board there. And man, I'm going digital and analog today. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I'm trying to get there. So I titled this The Round Table with the Church and with the Body, if you're making notes. I would encourage you. Here's, here's I believe, something unique is going to happen today, and I'll explain a little more. But I would encourage you to, if you have a way to take notes, maybe if you didn't, if you want to get that ready, not so much maybe for what I'm going to share with you, but for what you're about to hear from the body. So in Matthew uh, um, uh, chapter 16, uh, this is where, you know, Jesus asked the disciples, who do men say that I am? And, uh, you know, they give all kind of answers. And then Peter says, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. And Jesus makes this statement um, in uh, do, do, do 17. He says, um, Blessed are you, Simon Barjona, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And then in verse 18, he says, I also say to you that, <clears throat> that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. So he uses that word right there, church, right? Um, and so when we think of church today in America, we think, you know, that we come together like this and we have our praise and our worship. We have our, our tithes and our offerings and you hear a preacher a preaching a message, a teaching or whatever, right? And then we hopefully in there, we have some prophetic stuff. We pray for people. We see the sick healed or whatever. And, and we kind of get into this thing. Does that make sense? Is that kind of accurate, Right. Uh, I mean, if I say, hey, let's go to church, none of y'all think we're going to the Texans game, right? right. Um, and so there's this kind of this mindset. And so this word, ecclesia, oh, where'd it go? Uh-oh, where'd it go? Yeah, there it is. Okay. So it's ecclesia, and it's actually a governmental term. Jesus used this word in that time because it meant a specific thing. And really, the word, uh, it means a gathering or an assembly or a group that is called out, but then it specifies down a little closer. And it says that they are called out for the purpose of deliberating. And the most accurate usage at the time was that it is a legislative assembly or selected ones um, that is used for a group of people that are summoned or gathered to govern the affairs of a city. Now, I don't know about you, but that blows my mind because we thought that we just got saved and signed that little card and checked that box so that we could sit here and sing Praise the Lord, hallelujah, I just don't care what the devil's going to do. And maybe see some arms grow out or some people, dead people raised, right? That's not it at all. That's not it at all. Look, you've been here, if you've been here for any length of time, you know that we're a little bit different. And you know that we are pursuing reformation and infection into our community with the kingdom, right? That's what we're trying to do. But this description from Jesus himself gives you and I the full authority and capacity to infiltrate our city. Okay, thank you. I will. <laughs> We're going to take the city, Jim. Now, we've heard that kind of stuff for years, right? But I think that we've said it from the standpoint of, oh, let me hook up the let me hook up the outside sound system and let me get up there and, and preach and stomp and, and take my Bible around and hit the prostitutes in the head or, you know, hit the drug dealers in the head with my Bible, right? Been there? Yeah? I used to hunt them Catholics down, boy. Oh, I did. I used to hunt them down. When the reality is that you and I have been called out and summoned by the Father by Jesus himself through Holy Spirit to infiltrate the city. 
You know why? Because the city is your community. The city is where you live. The city is where you dwell. The city is where you do life. It's your surrounding area. The Greek other word is metron, your, your sphere of influence, right? Does that make sense? Everybody with me? So the other thing is this word is used 114 times in the New Testament, right? And this is the very beginning steps of the new covenant or the better covenant. And it started with a person, which was Peter. The 12 disciples, he called them out, right? And then he said, on this, I will build my church. And then the movement started. Yes? Yeah. Does that make sense? And so this is, this is what I wrote down. This is the very beginning steps of the new covenant that Jesus brought. It started with a person. It moved to 12. And then it moved to households. And then it filled families. And then it ran through neighborhoods. It took over cities. And now it expands to the whole world. And how does that happen? It happens through you and I. We have proof of this in Matthew 28 and in Isaiah 61. Isaiah 61, he clearly, I mean, and definitively states that we are meant to rebuild lost cities. We are meant to rebuild the desolations of ruined cities. Go back and check it out. It's around, it's Isaiah 61 around verse 5 or 6 right in there. Um, Matthew 28, go ye into all the... The world, Judea, Samaria, they started close by, spread out. It's the spreading of the good news of the kingdom. Amen? Does that make sense? And so it happens through you. It happens about you. Right? I love Dub, Dub and I steal a lot of Dub stuff right now because we're in his school. So it is what it is. He says uh, the kingdom um, is for you. This is not about you. Right? And he goes on and says all that kind of stuff about that. Um, the one thing that is about you is your step into becoming the church, the ecclesia. Not this. This is where we come in to get charged up, built up, powered up, and hear what's going on. We come together to deliberate. We also come together to learn, to be encouraged. We come together to be empowered, right? We're supposed to come together for the equipping of the saints. That right there is mine and Raquel's primary responsibility as the leaders, the ones driving the car at Core Church. Our primary responsibility is to open the platforms for you to walk on and run on and for us to lead and drive the car and to equip you for the work of the ministry. That makes sense? Are y'all sure y'all are with me? I want to. I want to make sure I'm not running too fast, man. Y'all are awfully quiet today. So, so what does that look like and how does that happen? You know, we have moments in the, in the New Testament of what gathering for church looked like. A few, we have a few of them, and it don't look nothing like what we've been used to doing. They came together. We changed this a little over a year ago, probably two and a half, three years ago, where we're coming together to have an encounter with the Father. But you see, one thing that I missed and I caught a couple of weeks ago is we're not just supposed to have an encounter with him. We're supposed to have an encounter with each other. Right? We come together for the edification and the equipping of the saints so that we can be the legislative called out ones to go out and reach the city and wherever you are. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to do that moment by moment, person by person, family by family. We're going to go out and we're going to change the community for the kingdom. We want to get affected <laughs> with the sickness of the kingdom, all right, so that they can be affected by the goodness of our God. And that's going to happen by you and I being the church. Now, here's the thing. I love, um, you know what? I don't know that there was many, many of y'all were in this when we had this happen, this conversation in one of our Friday night classes that we did a few years ago when we started taking the church through the prophetic and, and learning ourselves just, you know, a kingdom view. And Raquel made this comment on the very last class when she said, you know, for so long, church in general has always been like a pyramid with the pastor on the very top 
being controlling and, and doing everything, right? Which, if we're driving the car, yes, there's, there's some direction and some leadership that we have to step in and be, right? That's, that's what we're doing. But it was never supposed to be about controlling or lording over the body and the people. And she said that the actuality was it's not supposed to be this way. It's supposed to be an upside-down pyramid. And her and I, we're on the bottom of the foundation, Apostle and prophet are on the bottom. We lift up and push out everybody else into what you're supposed to do. That's what the fivefold ministry is truly all about. That's who we are as a community and as a church, as, as the body of core. That's who we are, and that's what we are doing since that time. No more of this, like, anyway, sorry. I'm going to get off on a tangent. Sorry. So here's the thing. Whew. In the New Testament, they would come together, Cornelius' house, the second most best powerful name in the whole Bible. <laughs> yes! I mean, it's, it's, it's where the Gentiles first receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. What are you talking about, man? It's the second most powerful thing. The whole world of Gentiles was opened up because of my last name. Woo! Yes! Sorry, Kevin. You too. Oh, and our wives and our kiddos, too, huh? <laughs> so turn, turn with me to the book of Acts, uh, chapter 2. Uh oh, where'd I go? Chapter 2. Um, this is where. Man, the Holy Spirit has just fallen on everybody, and it's all, they're all drunk. A bunch of Rebecca's in there. <laughs> so, um, 3,000 people come to know Christ that day, right? Verse 41 um, do, 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 Verse 41 uh, says that, uh, so then those who had received his word were baptized, and that day were added about 3,000 souls. Now, some of your versions will say added to the church, right? That's not in there. That is not in the original language because it was not they were added to the building of us in our group thing that we call church. It's they were added. Now, it is insinuated in the, in the reading of the Greek, the way it is, that they're added to what is happening, correct? I just want to really make the point that the word church is not in there because what we call church today does not exist like this. So I, I really wanted to make that clear. What, this word right here that they were added, this word is, uh, oh, man, I had it down and now I don't. <laughs> prostithemy that's what it is prostithemy I actually hit the button and listen and learn how to pronounce it I do like I want to do it right and uh, so it's prostithemy it's number 4369 in the uh, in the in the lexicon of the Greek language and it means to add to or to put together for a purpose or to gather, but it stresses the objective of the increasing. Think about that for a minute. When they talked about these people, remember, baptism, the Holy Spirit had just fallen, opened up everything. These 3,000 people are added with the stressing being that they were added with the objective of whatever the increase is. Or whatever is increasing. What was increasing? The kingdom was increasing right there, right? And so it's all about adding to what's going on and what's happening, not our 1950s idea of what church is supposed to be. We got, it's, it's time. I love Cindy Jacobs just said this this morning, and Maury Morillo said something else about it. And Raquel, um, yes, I'm throwing her in that, in that realm there. Um, she made this statement January 5th last year when we relaunched, when we rebranded. And she said, we're in a new, 
Uh, did you say era? You did. You said it was a new era. Cindy Jacobs said that this morning. Mara Murillo said it this morning also, talking about the new era uh, that's happening. And I've had Matt Gonzalez, um, oh my goodness, I think it might have been Dub, and it was someone else that told, told me specific, uh, Craig Ferris actually said, not as not prophesying. They were prophesying, and then they kind of got into the conversation with us and said, man, you're doing something that's different. You're doing something that's never been done before. And we've been talking about that, yes? Uh, y'all are weird. We are weird outside the normal. We are the weird church, not because uh, we do flags and lay out and scream and holler and sit there and do nothing. No, you're not because of that. We're different and weird because we're going somewhere that as, we know, as far as we know of, nobody else is doing what we're doing. And that doesn't mean we're better. It just means we're plowing a road. Okay? And my point is, um, we're going somewhere that hasn't been laid out before. And the new era, I believe, is for a deeper, authentic revelation or understanding with people of what the kingdom gathering actually looks like. The 1950 version was good for 1950. And I'm not saying that we're going to be changing and putting psychedelic wall coloring on or anything like that. It's not that. What I'm saying is, is that we've been pushing for an encounter with the Father and it's time that we break the mold of what we've even had and step into the new era of what he is doing in and through us for an authentic gathering of what the kingdom looks like. You want to know where it's really happening? Is back there in that living room. That's where it's really happening. It's happening, with all my joking aside, it's happening when you do go and sit down with John and have his burgers. Tell Zoe just to get out of the way. She don't need to be in that kitchen. <laughs> that was a joke. <laughs> it's that when that happens, that's, that's when the kingdom is, ha- that's the kingdom gathering. Does that make sense? When you're back there in that living room, yeah, we're eating breakfast, we're hanging out, we're talking. The other day, man, that's the funny thing, man. You people don't want to leave this place. The other day, y'all were here till 3.30. The other day after that, it was 3 o'clock. And then there's another one where it's like 2.45. I'm like, dang, girl, I'm hungry. Let's go. I got... But that's all good. I don't eat on these Sunday mornings because I got to sing, and I don't want you to hear that. I don't want you to hear my stomach rumbling in there. So I'm starving after service. But anyway, so here's the thing that we want to look at. Is how, does, how do we come together as kingdom people? You know we're supposed to be speaking into each other, yes? Yeah. We're supposed to be edifying each other. We're supposed to be iron sharpening iron with each other. How many of you know sometimes that I, I need a little, a little bump? Raquel gives me a lot of them. Right? Sarah will call me out. We're going to leave that right. Hey, stop already. (laughs) And so here's the beautiful thing about what we're about to do. I've asked several people. Uh, I, 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 want, I would love to hear from everyone. If you're not comfortable speaking, then it's okay. There is absolutely no pressure whatsoever. Um, we're not, we're not going to have everybody come up. Um, we're we're going to take the mic around. Um, I'm going to ask you to stand uh, when, you, when you're going to share. We're not going to prophesy over somebody. We're not going to give testimony about this morning. What we're looking for is we want to know what is on your heart. If you remember, three weeks ago I mentioned that, and I asked um, for you to begin to ask the Lord, ask, ask Dad, man, what do you want us to do? What do you, what's my calling? My calling is different from yours, correct? You know, when I look around, uh, you know, Mary's pretty, um, Larry says, man, don't get her started, but she's, 
you get her on in politics, man, and she gets going. Why? Because it's, it's in her heart. That's not a bad thing. You know what's bad is the church has been out of politics for all these years. That's what's bad. We should have been being the voice to influence and instruct. And I believe that she's going to cut away into that. So, but we need to hear that if that's an idea on her heart. I've, I've, I've got four or five people that I asked to share. Uh, and, I, and it's specifically because they have, only reason I called on them is because uh, they have shared with me this is something they want to do. I know, hey, if the kids are, where's all the kids? All the kids, stand up real quick. Look at me. Hey, kiddos, real quick. Oh, man, I don't know you. What's your name? Oh, that's okay. Kenist, oh, Keniston. Brother, that is a sweet name. All right. All right. Where's all the kiddos back there? They may be getting a little restless. Hey, if anybody needs, if y'all parents, if you didn't come prepared and you need some kind of color drawing thing or something, we got stuff. Uh, somebody will, one of, one of the ladies will get that for you if you need it. But all you kids, wave your hand at me real quick. Wave your hand. Come on, Keniston. All right. Yeah, there you go. All right. All right. Hold. Do a dance. No, I'm just kidding. That's all right. All right. Y'all can sit back down. You're good. All right. Hey, Roger. You good? Yeah. Yeah. All right, man. Cool. You just need to get the wiggles out. It's all good. I get it. Okay, cool. So we're going to hear from you guys this morning. So uh, Raquel um, and, and Kevin's going to be running around with the camera. Um, so we're going to start. I'm going to ask Jim and Kathy to start. If you can go to them first. Um, they've shared with me uh, some stuff. And so, I, and look, let me say one other thing. Look, if you, I know it's 12.04. We're usually out of here about 12.30. I'm not in a rush today. I'm not. It, 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 look, here, here's what I want to encourage you. If you have to go, then, then by all means, you can just step right out. But I want to really encourage you. I want to really encourage you to even take a note. Because how many of you in here really know the heart of Jim and Kathy other than the things that I've said? Like, you probably don't. So here's, here's what's going to happen. They're going to say some things, and I think it's going to jar something with you to write down. They want, you know, I'll steal one. It's pastors to pastors. And, and, and I would write that down. And now you know, oh, man, Jim and Kathy really want to, they want to minister to pastors. And you'll remember to pray for them. You'll remember to speak into that, right? We still have our spoken word understanding, don't we? All right. And the thing is, it's not mine and Raquel's ministry of core church. It's your ministry of core church. Amen. And even if we wanted to be part of every single aspect of every single thing that everybody's going to do here, we couldn't do that all. We couldn't do every single thing every single time. So that's why we're going to hear from you so that you all can be involved at the very least of speaking into. I'm going to give you some examples uh, when Jim and Kathy are done here, we'll take a couple of minutes and hear their hearts. So you guys go ahead. You got it there, babe? Yeah, if y'all would stand just so the camera can get you. <laughs> I'll get her started. We, we have two dreams and two callings of the Lord at this point in our lives. One is pastors and the other is grace groups. Kathy's going to talk about the grace groups. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much. One thing I so much love about this church is that it gives way for your dreams, you know. And so Jim and I have been, we're just going to be real brief. I'm going to be real brief with this. But we've carried this vision, this heart cry for a long time. Um, we've seen it to a certain extent through ministry in the past. But it, this was something new. And just what Chris said was, we're on the edge of something. We don't understand where we're going, you know, what it's going to look like, how it's going to flesh out. But we do know the dreams and passions that God put in our heart. And one of the passions is um, grace, grace groups. They're, they're groups that, so get out of your mind, life groups. Get out of your mind, cell groups, mm. home groups, Come all on. those kind of things of the past. That's that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about living relational groups that will gather together and invite others into that group. What it looks like, I don't know. 
for me, in a certain location, people coming into your house, that's where you break bread together. That's where you hear each other's hearts. That's where you encourage and walk life stuff together. You know, stuff happens. And we so certainly want to see each other as build, built up. But um, we fletched out a couple years ago that where our heart was going, but we didn't have any place to, like, place it. And um, you're already walking into, in this, into what we see as grace groups, the grace and the love of, of God being poured out to one another. Um, so what he said about the, the 12 disciples, okay, they went out. And then we're the households. The households gathered together. They broke bread. The teaching, there was something there that was so dynamic that we've lost. We tried to mimic that through our church experiences, but so many people have been hurt and have um, experienced the negative part of what that looks like. But this is a new day. It's yeah, a new era. <laughs> We're stepping into something um, where you could bring your neighbor in. You could bring that person that you found down there in the street. Come, come. This is family. This is what the family of God looks like. Amen. So that's our heart, um, and that's all I'm going to say about it. Yeah, amen. Let me ask you a question. How long, how many hours does your family take? Just to be family. Moms, how long does it take to nurture your kids? Take care of the house, maybe do a job. It takes all the time. Yeah. And that's one of the problems we see in the church today. We have very little time. And I believe God wants to change that. I believe God wants us to have time for family. And the living room is a fantastic thing, but it's only a beginning. It's only a beginning. In my heart, I see family groups gathering in neighborhoods all around the country. It takes time. Not discipleship groups, not Bible studies, but family groups that gather at John and, and Zoe's house, at your house, at our house, and we fellowship, we love each other, we encourage each other, we support each other. We're not judging, we're not critical, we're loving and accepting and building. That's a grace group. Yeah. I believe God is going to plant those more and more and more and more around the country. The big burden on my heart is for pastors, and I'm going to share real quick uh, an experience I had back in 1986. Some of you weren't even around then. <laughs> I was in uh, a campground, in uh, a big campground in Georgia. We, we, we were down there, my wife and I were down there uh, at this campground, and I went into the tabernacle early uh, in the morning because it was cool. And like here, it gets hotter than blazes down there. And I, as I walked in and I sat down, there were two men behind me. And I was close enough to begin to hear what they were saying. And they were pastors talking about the problems they were having in their churches. And as I listened, I heard the voice of the Lord. First, not, not an actual voice, but an impression from the Lord. The first time I, I remember having a solid impression from the Lord. One day, you're going to minister to people like that. And I've held on to that ever since. And there's been other prophetic word about, about us ministering and so on and so on and so forth. Um, I love it when people prophesy and say, you're not done yet. I'm 75 years old. Most people, when they're 75, are ready to sit down and pass away. I'm not looking at passing away. I'm looking at moving on. And we love to get together with pastors and their wives, not pastors alone. The wife carries a major burden in the pastorate. And not many people understand that. You guys have learned to honor and love your pastors. Uh, at least one of them is real easy to love. No, 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 I'm kidding. I'm kidding. I love this man like a son. I really do. And, and, and as I get to know you, I love you the same way. But each of us is different. And pastors and their wives, we love to get together with pastors and their wives. Because we love to encourage them. 
We were in the ministry, for pastoral ministry, for 50 years. We've been there. We've done that. It's done its thing on us. We've had to deal with trauma traumatic experiences, with rejections, with people coming against us, with, with legalistic people moving in and trying to run everything, the whole system. We've dealt with a lot of that. Or Actually, the Lord has dealt with it. So based on the experiences of our hurts and our failures and our encouragements, there are a couple of people in our lives that taught us this ministry and how it works. And the Lord spoke something to me, and with this I'm going to end. The Lord spoke something to me, I think it was this morning, about grace. The Apostle Paul wrote to the Ephesians that by the grace of God, I've been called to be an apostle. And the Lord put this in my heart. By the grace of my grace, I have called you to love on and encourage and minister to pastors and their wives. And we've seen a beginning to this. We've always tried to do this wherever we went, but we've seen a beginning. We were able to gather five pastoral couples together last Friday. And I think it was really good. What do you guys think? Yeah. Yeah. We had fun. Kathy came up with a game that I've never heard of before, but it was fun. It was a good time. And five pastoral, actually six of us, got to get to know each other a little bit. What we're hoping and praying is that we'll continue these kinds of gatherings until we become friends together. Pastors' wives' friends, and Kathy has a vision for that. She calls it her gathering place, right? What is it? I can't. Huh? Keeping room. Because we want to keep our pastor's wives. Anyway, she has a vision to gather these women together for the same purpose. To grow together. You know, guys, women talk about good things when they get together. Oh, we do too. I love talking about hunting and fishing in Alaska, about shooting, about this, that, and the other thing. But they talk about spiritual things <coughs> that are in their hearts. And that's what our heart is, to help people through the experiences, good, bad, and indifferent, in a way that builds the kingdom of God. Amen. If we can build up our pastors, they can build up the church. Thank you. Amen. So what I, what I would encourage you to do is I would write down, this is if you want to do this, I'm telling you how to do it, my thoughts are, write down Kathy, Grace Groups, Jim, Pastors, and Pastors Hearts. And, and, and sir? Have them for dinner, yeah. I, but so make it concise and short so you can have that and, and have your quick note. That way during the week, during if you want to hang on to this, man, what is core about? And right off the bat, you have Jim and Kathy's heart right there. You know how to pray. You know how to speak into that. You know how to encourage them, ask questions. Hey, how's that going with grace groups? Does that make sense? So that's what we're looking for. Just, just give us that. That, uh, that's, that opportunity to speak into their lives, into your lives. Amen. So uh, let's, let's get Eric. If you can grab Eric over there, brother. Uh, man, Eric's got a great heart. I love this guy. So just share real quick with us, brother, what uh, you had shared something specific, and I wanted to share that. Thank you. Um, I know you said pastors, but I'm going to be at your house, uninvited or not. I'm, I'm showing up. <laughs> and. Plan on picking your head, picking your heart, and picking your spirit. It's a, it's a lot in there for us to learn from. Yeah. So for me, um, it's, it's been in my heart to gather the men. Um, no particular way, no particular agenda. I want to gather the men so for us to just fellowship. And I know it's a, it's a churchy word, but just, just be friends with each other. It, yeah. You know, it, there's, there's no agenda. Yeah. We can go fishing. We can go shooting we can go help somebody build a pergola in, in in their backyard it doesn't matter right we just want to gather the men and that leads to talking which leads to testimonies which leads to friendships and that's the important part yeah. on it so um yeah it's i mean we were called to come here we didn't just come because we wanted to we were called yeah yeah, yeah. um and i'm seeing the reason why Amen. right <laughs> Pastor Chris became Chris, and that's through gatherings, that's through us getting together, and I want to do the same thing with the rest of you guys, the rest of you men, particularly for me, and I know my wife has the same 
calling for the ladies. Um, I want everybody to taste his burgers. <laughs> you know, and, and I know he can't feed everyone, but you know, that, you know we, we can do this. You know, hey, and by the way, you have competition, John. Yeah. Jim's burgers are pretty good, yeah. so it's, just saying. So, I mean, I, again, I don't have a particular way or agenda to do this. I just want to gather the men. I want us to know each other beyond yeah. our, our names. Come on. There's circumstances and things that we've been through that can help each other out. Yeah, come on. Um, like they say, a man with an experience, uh, or a man with an opinion has nothing, and a man with an experience, right? right. We want to hear your testimonies and, and help each other out, where there's just a go over there and hug each other. Yeah. It's okay. Uh, or lift each other up with words. It's beautiful. And here's the thing. So I believe that Eric has the idea and the understanding of what the new era of gathering the men looks like. He hasn't fully stepped into that yet, but he's going to because he's making steps, right? And so he just voiced that out to you, the family, the community here. And so now you begin, you can write that down. Eric, gather the men. Begin to, man, Lord, give Eric wisdom. Man, give him strategy. Man, Lord, give him, because it's not going to look like the men's meetings of old where we just got together and cooked breakfast and we, we did, talked about Fox News or whatever. Those days are gone. We're not going to do that anymore. That's like, it doesn't work anymore because there's a new era. There's a new thing. What he's talking about is actually the word konomaria in the Greek. When you see the word fellowship, which actually just a little bit below the verse we just read in Acts 2.41, it says that all of those people that, that came and were added to the, 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 the church, it says that they, they did four things, and uh, the second was fellowship. The second thing was fellowship, and it's the word kona maria. It doesn't mean we sit down and eat. It means we, we have interaction, intimacy, intimacy together. So now you know how to pray for Eric and what's, what's on his heart. And that's just one thing. There's a lot of more things that are going to come out, right? So John and Zoe are right there. Let's hear from them real quick. And uh, uh, this is going to be good stuff here. So can you all stand so that they get you on the camera the right way? And, uh, yeah, even you can face. There you go. Hi. Um, so it's interesting that you... Um, went to Acts because at 2.31 on the dot, I woke up and I read all of Acts 2. Wow. So thank you, Holy Spirit. Yeah. Um, so um, just sort of going a little bit off of um, Jim and Kathy, um, home life um, for us, we came alive. And I think that that has been sort of like within us, like that fellowship. And I know we all joke about John's Burgers and people coming over, but but that's, that's life. Let's do life together. And I think that's um, like that God drop idea that, um, you know, came in me and I know came in Roger too was the living room. And we, you know, we called it the fellowship hall forever, right? Yeah. Um, but let's live together. Let's um, tell stories together. Let's hear what's going on in your week. What's, what's going on in your life? What are, what's that new thing that you just, you know, you want to do? Um, what is it? Um, and it's, it's been so beautiful to see everyone come in and have breakfast and, and um, stay after church, and we're just, like, organically just talking to each other, and it's just it's so beautiful. I mean, I mean, like, the time flies. We're like, okay, we've been here for three hours. Um, <laughs> but it's been awesome. But just digging more deeply into that, um, like I said, we came alive, and it's like, how can we continue to go deeper into that? Like, I just, I spend like a few minutes with people, you know, talking, but how can we go deeper? Um, so some ideas that we've thrown out there is really getting out and doing outings together, doing family events together, having game nights together. Um, and then I know that that looks to, leads to is, you know, hearing your life story, your testimonies, you encouraging me, me encouraging you. And, and the thing is, is that we all have a different, unique gift, and I need a piece of you, and you need a piece of me. And um, so I just, I know that's our heart, and we love having people over. We'd love to have you all over. But what's so cool is that we've created that environment, that atmosphere here. I mean, the, yes, we come here to encourage and get charged up, and then we go out. And so that is, that, 
This is our home. <laughs> this is our big home where we can go in and fellowship and get charged up together. Um, did you want to expand on that? Okay. <laughs> um, so, so that's what's burning inside of me is how do we continue to do family fellowship together? Um, and so we have some ideas planned for that. Um, but then also, y'all know me with the arts. Um, so arts is huge for me, and just sharing the kingdom through the arts um, and being able to just um, pour in to the people to say, you, can be, you are creative, number one. We're all born creative. Is this your definition of creativity? Yeah. And then how can that idea that you have get ignited in you? And it's just so beautiful to see. So I know that's my heart. And how that looks like, um, you know, I have HCA, yes. But how does that look for us here as a family, as core? I don't know what that looks like. But I know I want to see it. And I want to be able to pour into young kids, um, anyone, of what that looks like for creativity for you. And that we can just share the kingdom through it. Yeah. So that's... that's um Beautiful, and, and I'm going to spill the beans on the school. So she had another idea. She felt like the Lord wants. Yes. Okay. Yeah, I'll tell you it anyway. No. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. She felt, she felt like the Lord wants her to do a school for HCA. So now, like, that is huge and massive because HCA is a breakthrough thing that's going on um, all because exactly what we're doing right here today that's what happened with john and zoe is they heard something brought it out we started talking we supported they ran and here we have h healing center of the arts today and now that can there's a potential in the future for a school for that beautiful stuff amen so now you know how to pray and you notice the theme about family it's beautiful right there's something going on so uh, let's grab lydia back there real quick don't grab her. Just hand her the mic and and. Uh... Um, I just heard teaching facility. Um, you know what I love about these groups of weirdos is that we are weird, but when we introduce someone to that, they need to know what to do with that. They already know they're weird, but they don't know how accepting that is. So I think that um, we're just. I, I want Core to be a facility where they come. We equip them, we train them, and then in return, they get to go out and equip others. Yeah. Um, I also think that the core is ready for a youth group. Um, half my kids are teenagers, and I'm not talking about mine personally. I'm talking about my kids' ministry. Yeah. Most of them are over 12. I have two or three that are technically kids' age. So, Come on. Um, and they are our future, guys. Um, yes. I also want to see an opportunity for them to have a voice. Well, they do have a voice, but to express it, because these kids um, have so much to say, um, and they have so much power. So just promoting their voice, too. Um, I know I'm going to speak for James, because he's kind of shy. He also has a heart to see a food pantry um, where we can just uh, feed the community. and feed them spiritually and physically boom you see that that's the way this is supposed to go you hear that and now you know jot that down and be praying for uh we do need a youth lead we need someone to lead the youth right we need, we need that it's an actual need here in our community and for the community out there so now you know that be praying for that praying for man james his heart is to feed the community that takes uh, strategy it takes means and things like that and so we'll be able to move into that as you call that out as you speak that as you pray for that so uh, let's grab Ryan and Adriana I called on them uh, and so these are the last of our examples of people that I gave a rundown of how we wanted this to go so next it's a it's a free for whoever wants to go next so uh, in a minute you can raise your hand and uh, go for it uh oh yeah, my kid's going to take over. We don't know what we're doing with our lives. I'm just kidding. <laughs> no. Um, so God's really been speaking to us about our seasons that we're in right now. So we have lots of vision and ideas. But we're super excited. I'm excited to hear a lot about everyone else's because our hearts are really for family. Um, 
Daddy's going to get you one. <laughs> and um, I think one of the things that we carry is a breakthrough for purity. And yeah. purity um, meaning more like authenticity. And so, like, we've, we've worked through a lot of stuff in our marriage for that. Um, and so that's, that's a huge piece of our heart is marriages and having a safe place. And then also leadership is a huge thing for us, too. Um, a few years ago, I had my whole church family of over 20 years walk away from me and my family when they should have been there. And so that's kind of, that's another like huge piece of my like calling is there should always be a safe place in church and true family, not like when it's convenient. And so, but as we walk through life, we come in contact with people all the time who have the exact same experience. And they're like, why would we ever go back to that? Like people have more grace for people outside of the church than their own church family. And so that's kind of um, our hearts are really for marriage, um, church, family, and um, yeah, just making babies right now. (laughs) I still haven't figured out how that works. (laughs) Uh, I feel another one of our big callings is um, expanding kingdom in the presence of God. That, That really gets us fired up every day, man. Um, so a lot of people know our story. Uh, we came from, uh, Northern California, the Mission Church. A lot of y'all have met a lot of the people that have came there and sp- spoke. They're all powerhouses. And, and, and going into that church, man, I never thought I was going to experience something like that again. I really didn't. I really thought that church, man, you walk through the front doors and you just hit like a brick wall. You feel the presence of God. And I was like... And when, whenever we had to leave that place, it really put me down because I was like, man, I'm never going to feel that again. But <laughs> I'll be honest with you, I thought the presence of God was only in California. Because, I mean, <laughs> that's the only time I felt that. You know, you got Bethel, you got the Mission, you got Michael Dalton down south. And I was like, man, I guess it's only, I, I don't know where the presence of God <laughs> But then, you know, we came here. And uh, it was amazing, you know. We... we uh, Every, every time I come here and I get in this church, I look at these walls, I look at these ceilings, and they're just not big enough because I know it's about to happen. There's not enough chairs here. There is going to be a surplus of people coming into this place. Amen. Yeah. And you feel it, man. You just feel it in the spirit. You might not see it right now, but you can feel it in the spirit, and it's amazing, and it's hot, man. <laughs> and I just love it, how it just how it flows and right when we got here, <laughs> going back to when we met Christian Raquel up there, um, what was that, uh, Kingdom and uh, Reformers. Kingdom Kingdom Reformers. Reformers. And he's like, yeah, just come down and check out our church. We're like, yeah, that'd be cool, you know. You know, we, we're, we're thinking it's like one of them churches, you know, you go, you listen to three worship songs, you listen to the pastor, and then, you know, you go out to eat afterwards, and you try to forget about what you all learned the night before, or, that, or the couple hours before that, you know. But man, dude, right... We got in this church, and I was like, man, this place is amazing. It's just like, I, it, it was just like right when I got in this church, I could start getting those feelings again where that presence just hits you, and it's just, it's overwhelming. And I just, I just, I know there's so many dry people out there. There's so many people that are so thirsty looking for that, just that taste of that well that's, it, that's in this church. That once they taste it, man, it, it's just like us. We taste it. We can't go back. We can't go back. We've already experienced enough. We've seen the miracles. We've seen the testimonies. Man, we felt the presence. We can't go back anymore. We can only go forward. And that is how, man, when these people start tasting that and start seeing it, it's game over, you know? <laughs> I feel like the kingdom, I always tell people like this, the kingdom's like having a Corvette in your driveway, you know? You, you can be one of them guys, you know, uh, you know, you got your ticket to heaven. You, you know, you can get in that thing, you can drive 55, hit the cruise, and you know you're going to make your way to heaven. You know, you got a ticket. Everybody knows you're going to Or you can be like us, you can be a little crazy. You can do a burnout off the driveway, you can hit the freeway going about 100 miles per hour, and you're going. And everyone's like, wow, that guy's nuts. That guy's crazy. But that's what's attractive. You know? People are attracted to that. 
They want to see that. They don't want to just do this little 55 cruise, you know. We got a 500 horsepower Jesus in us, on, and we're ready to roll. <laughs> so that that that's man. I just want the kingdom to explode, and everyone just to feel the presence. Because I know they can't deny it, and they're always going to want something more. So, yeah. There you go. That's good stuff, yeah? Yeah. So those are, the, those are my example people that I had called and, and given exa- you know, direction on because of what they had shared with me personally. So who else would love to share your heart and what's going on? Mary, go ahead. Cry baby, get it from my dad. <laughs> um, I just want to share my heart. Um, my goodness, I know, but <laughs> I haven't even started. Okay, so um, my heart—I have a mixture of hearts. If y'all talk to me, like if we've talked, you know. But one of the things that I want to talk about is um, the ministry for women. Um, I knew I was gonna. So basic, basically, I, the Lord had me open the door for women once a month. We started this, this um, January. Um, most of y'all were there. Um, my heart is to open a safe um, environment, safe place for women to come together to strengthen each other. And one of the scriptures was iron sharpens iron. And um, just want to uh, uh, read the verse that I, that I shared with the women. Um, it's iron sharpens iron, so a man sharpens a friend's character. Iron sharpens iron, so a friend sharpens a friend. And iron, as iron sharpens iron, so one, so one man sharpens and influences another through discussion. And that's my heart. Is, is not only just sharpening each other through the word of God, you know, but knowing each other, you know, influencing each other, building our characters up to to what God has, you know, pulling those gifts. One of the things that me and Larry have is, you know, seeing those gifts inside of people that are some, at most times are locked away and people don't know that those gifts and just pulling them out for God's glory so, so that they can get activated for whatever it is. Um, so, you know, that's one of the things for the women's ministry is bringing women together and um, having ministries that are inside of them come to life. To, to realize, hey, I can do this because I'm not going to do this alone. You know, this person or that person next to me or wherever they go, um, they come together, they strengthen each other. And I think this, um, Jan- this last meeting, we had five different churches there. And it wasn't like, hey, come to my church. It was none of that, you know. We, it was none of that. It was coming together as women of God who love the Lord, who want to hear his heart for them getting strengthened and then going and doing the same thing for the women that are that they encounter at their church or at work or school whatever it is it's knowing um that this whole you know gossip and division that the world feeds women it's not of christ it's not of the lord it's unity is within women so that's one of my hearts that i wanted to share it's good stuff man so now you know who's next Marilyn? So, one of the things, I, when Pastor Chris put this out on the WhatsApp last night, I um, was just praying about it. And what I realized is we have a perfect opportunity that um, is just sitting in front of us. We do Angel Tree every year, right? They come, we give them a party, we give them guests. But that's not all that they want. They want family. They want belonging. They want to be a part of what we have to offer. So I guess, I don't know if it's a mind shift. I just feel like we need to reach out. I think that's a great resource we have. And we're not reaching out as much as we need to. We need to invite them, not as our guest. We need to invite them as our family, and we need to include them as our family. And that may be going out to a park, somebody said, going out to a park and playing kickball, you know, going out and just doing things and making them feel a part of what God has to offer. 
And once they fill that part, they're going to want more, just like we do. And they're going to keep asking. So I just feel like we have some resource that we can reach out to our community. My biggest heart is family and community. So I think we need to shift. I don't know, Pastor Chris, I don't know if I'm using the word. Shift to not to invite in, but to be a part of. Does that make sense? I don't know. I just thought of that myself. So that's beautiful, but here's the key to that is who's our angel tree point in this whole place? It's her right there. No, this isn't a bad thing. She's naturally going to see that because that's her heart. Where That's why she's running that because that's her heart, not because we said, oh, Marilyn, you do it. No, she wanted to do that. So that's her heart. The rest of us don't see the way she sees that particular thing. So the beautiful thing is, like even the language you you just came up with your own self right there is for all these years those people have been our guests we haven't made them family and that's not a knock on us we're growing in grace and now we understand better so now you get the privilege and the honor of figuring out how do we do that and the body is going to support what you're doing because that's what we've done all along is support that ministry and so as you get the idea and the language and the, the direction, because everybody else here is going to be praying for that for you, because now we know, hey, Marilyn needs ideas. She needs strategy. And maybe, maybe Mary Jane gets an idea or a strategy that, hey, maybe we, we could do this. And she's going to give that to you. You know what I'm saying? This is the way the community is supposed to. This is what church is supposed to be right there. That is probably one of the best examples of how this is supposed to work right there. Does that make sense? Yeah? Who else? Somebody else? Carrie? So I've been working on Christ's closet for quite a while. Then we moved. Everything got moved. Blah, blah. <laughs> it's been a lot. Now I'm working on the 501c3, the legality of it, so that I'm covered completely. I have not for I have not given up. Mm -hmm. I I believe it can tie in to a bunch of things that we've already talked about. The the food pantry what you we were talking about, I mean, it, so many things. And it's my dream is my passion mm -hmm. to build people up from you know, to help them find a job to I mean, there's just so many things. Yeah. And we, I have the building already, everything. I just have to finish the doing the 501c3. And that takes a while. So I don't know if I can just do it anyway, just start doing it or what. But it's still very much on my heart. Yeah. That's cool. If y'all don't know, Carrie is... Uh, a good resource for clothes and neat physical needs like that. You know, she's got a whole big old building full of. Anybody else? I do. Oh, yeah? I think um, so this morning it was, uh, it was Patricia King and Mario Morello that I was listening to, and they both talked about that new era. And I, I remember a while back looking up the definition. Like, you know what, a new, what an era is, right? But I was looking at the definition, and I, I can't remember the exact words, but it was going somewhere where we've never gone before. And what I see so powerful just about that word is we've all been to the home groups. We've all been to the women's ministry and the, the men's ministry and it's all, I, I don't wanna make it sound like everybody's like this, but the majority of the time, everybody puts on their good face. Oh no, we're good, how are you, you're good? I'm good, we're good, my kids are good, everybody's good. And they are, the reality is, is we're not good. <laughs> If we were good, we wouldn't be, the church wouldn't be where it's at right now. Yes. And I love, I love hearing everybody talk about where they don't have the exact um, prescription or plan of what they're doing, because this is something that has never been done before. It's not your typical, let's get this book and let's just read through it. It's touching those people's hearts. It's getting in and letting them be vulnerable with the fears and the concerns and the hurts that we have in our hearts. Because it's not just the people out there, it's us too. Yeah. Hearing their hearts is gonna help us grow also. So I loved, I loved hearing all of the, 
all of the ideas and all of the feelings and all the hearts that were shared right now because we don't know where we're going. And I think what I love about hearing it is, you know, Chris from up here, he talks about, we don't know where we're going. <laughs> but I hear that you guys don't know where you're going either. <laughs> That's so cool. We're in the right place. Yes, we're in the right place. It's so cool because the beautiful thing is that it's through that relationship with the Lord that we're going to find where to go. How do I come up with those words for that person that's hurting? Or sometimes just be quiet and listen to them and let them minister to you because you've got the same issues. You know what I'm saying? Like, oh, that's so beautiful. So beautiful that it's not, it's beautiful that to know that we as a body are trying to figure out where we're going. What's the new? I'm not looking to um, put down what someone else is doing. I'm not. I think, I don't know what I think about that. But I'm just looking at us, where we're going, what we're trying to build, where we're trying to go. And I love that it's happening because of our relationship with the Lord, because hearing everybody's hearts that it's all the same and it's okay to be vulnerable. It's okay to be afraid. It's okay to not know. That's, that's, I just, I loved hearing you guys' hearts. So. Yeah. Amen. Anybody else? Oh, there we go. I knew, I was going to make you talk anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask nicely. <laughs> well, I have a lot of things in my heart, um, but I just feel like I need to say this because it's something new and just a step in my faith to declare this out loud so I can, my spirit can also hear it and just release it into atmosphere. Um, something new that's birth and stirring in me even stronger is the passion for the very young adults that are in a place that they don't know um, they're, they're, they don't know which way to go. They're not fully accepted here and, and, or there, and, and they're not really um, growing in their relationship with the Lord. And they don't, they're not accepted everywhere. They, they're in fact, you know, a lot of people judge them because of the things they're doing, the things they're saying, and my heart is just to love them. And to be vulnerable with them and create a safe place for them, um, a family for them that maybe they didn't have that family, that safe place for them at their house. But I want us to learn how to be that safe place for them where they can say something that they're doing or that they've done and not feel judgment or rejection, but instill, instead feel loved and accepted. And, and somehow that we can show them how, what real love looks like that will put a desire in them to, to want to be helped. Because what I have found is so many, they don't know or, or uh, know how to get help. They're trying to figure things out on their own. But if we can let them see that they can trust us, then maybe they'll let us help them and show them how to be helped. Um, so that's something new in my heart. Um, and, you know, we, we're stepping out just with what we have. And, and if we can just be a, a ear to let them hear, you know, to, to let them speak everything that's in their heart and begin a relationship with them, that's what I want to do. But my heart is not, you know, just for those few that I have here. But I have a heart for when I see them in the streets and when I see them in the store, you know, I see the pain in their eyes. I see the struggle that's there. I was there. And I, and I want to just love them and hug them and, and let them know it can change. It can be better. You know? That's good stuff. Amen. There is a whole lot more there, too. So get around Rebecca and find out. Anybody else? Something you want? Oh, there we go, Roger. So... <clears throat> something that's just been just stirring in my heart and just like my mom, I'm just going to speak it out so that my spirit can receive it. Um, I think that since I've been here with CORE, I've honestly just been feeling my heart just being pulled toward the youth more and more. And there have been obstacles in my own life that's kept me from pursuing that dream that that desire that God has already had put in me from the beginning. And, um, and one thing that I, like, last Sunday, I don't know if everybody saw, but 
just seeing Elena just being just being drawn around me as I'm worshiping the Father, it was been more and more confirmation just from God just showing me, look, they they need you. But more than that, I need them. And um I think that's part of my walk and the things that I've been through it's um been leading me to this place that I am today and more than actually my wife probably doesn't even realize it but we are called to them we're called to love them and to help grow them into the mature character of God that they carry and we've been doing that with just I know lately we've been doing it with our nephews and having them come over on a Saturday and stay night and play games with them, laugh at whatever they're laughing at and just have a good time. And, um, you know, I just, I know that's one area that God is just pulling us into and just stirring up inside of our hearts. And um, I know he's using the tie-dye stuff to actually kind of just get that going, but I know that's just a piece of it. Um, something else that's been on my heart a lot, and I think my wife's heart too is, you know, marriage. You know, I took one of my uh, Instagram pages that I had created and turned it into where it wasn't just about me because before I was single. <laughs> I was like, okay, God, what do we call this page? And it was created to love you. Learning that I was from the beginning before I was even in a thought or an idea to my mom and dad that I was actually created to love Sarah, right? I was created to love her for who she is already, not trying to change her, but love her to where she can become and step into the woman of God that she is and to uplift her and encourage her through her journey, through her walk with God. That is I'm called to do that. And I know there are other men, other husbands out there that probably don't know that. Or vice versa, there's other, you know, women that don't that, that don't know that their husbands are supposed to do that. <laughs> but we I know it's part of our heart that we want other couples to to grow with. To to get to know each other and to talk about things together that we can cultivate a safe place to um, to develop each other and to get to know each other more, I think, is more important. Um, and so youth and marriages, I feel God is just, just really just taking us in that direction. So. That's good stuff. So now you know how to pray. Sarah, you got something? He had it. And y'all didn't even talk about it? Yeah, all right. Holy Spirit. Yeah. Uh, Kevin or Ronnie, do y'all, I, I know y'all, I don't want y'all just focus on just the cameras. If y'all got something you want to say, I can't see y'all, either one of you. No, no, they're just workaholics. Um, I will say this. Um, one thing that is huge on mine and Raquel's heart uh, is the business and the entrepreneurial spirit. Uh, you know, we, we carry that very strongly. Um, Raquel is, is very solid foundation for me because I will dream the world away with uh, how, to, how to make money and how to have a business. I, I just, I tend to see that stuff in, in, in almost anything. No, I really do. You know. <laughs> and um, uh, Kevin has a very, um, in a lot of practical ways with accomplishing certain things, Kevin's a genius at, at putting things together from a mechanical standpoint or from a, um, a, a structural standpoint of how things should flow and work. And Ronnie is a great business guy. And uh, I believe that, uh, or one thing that I want to see is I want to see uh, CORE become a hub for business runners and business leaders. Uh, I, I would love to see a church where uh, all of you are in business in one form or a fashion or another. Just because you have a regular day job doesn't mean you can't have a business also. And I would love to see that. And I think that um, uh, for certain, uh, those two guys and us to have an insight into that. Um, we're One of our uh, first guinea pigs is probably going to 
excuse me, going to be Mr. Axton over here with um, Axe Pit Barbecue, Axe Man's Barbecue. Uh, that's he's got a dream uh, to own his own barbecue company, and he wants to have it next to the church so that he can, you know, those things at the bank where the the shoots where they you send your stuff in. He wants to have one of those in my office from his kitchen. So that right after church, I can go in my office and I can eat his barbecue without having to walk over to the shop. That kid loves me, man. It's beautiful, right? Now, we're going to see how that works out in the next few years with business. And so that's just another one of the things on our heart. But anybody else? Joy, so good to see you today. I'm the mother of the burgers. <laughs> but uh, this has just been beautiful as a visitor to come in and, and to see the dreams of your heart and what God is placing on you. And the Holy Spirit just woke this scripture up in me that I've, I've read many times. You know, uh, all of you here, I think, probably know that Zion is a word for the ecclesia or the church also. And in Psalms, the 48th chapter... I believe this is the Holy Spirit speaking to you guys this morning out of the Amplified. Uh, Psalm 48, starting with verse 11. (laughs) Hallelujah. Let Mount Zion be glad. Let the daughters of Judah rejoice because of your righteous judgments. And this is the good part. Walk about Zion and go around. I'm getting too blurry out. Walk around about Zion and go round about her. Number her towers, her lofty and noble deeds of past days. Consider well her ramparts. Go through her palaces and citadels yeah. that you may tell the next generation and cease recalling disappointments. Yeah. Yes. For this God is our God forever and ever. He will be our guide even until death. So as you hear about all your ideas, your dreams, it's like walking around about Zion and seeing her ramparts. Look at that. Look what God's doing there. Look what God's doing. He's building something beautiful for his final day. And you get to be a part of it. Praise God. Man, that's powerful. Thank you, Joy, so much for hearing hearing the Holy Spirit. I believe that is full on a word from the Lord right there. Uh, the beautiful city of Zion. Amen? Amen? Amen. We're just talking about building cities. Uh, Angela's got her hand. Did you have your hand up? Uh Uh-oh. Here we go. Ooh, praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord, saints. Let's all give, all all of us give God praise. Praise the Lord, saints. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. That's my favorite part. Um, Well, I wasn't going to say anything, but um, Pastor just said about entrepreneur, and that has been on my heart for years. I have been trying something for years, but it hasn't really um, come off the ground yet. Um, Sister Marilyn is one of my helpers to transport me to the PO post office. But as Pastor said about, uh, about entrepreneur, just came to me to say something about that. That has been on my mind for years. But the main reason why I wanted to do it is to help um, churches, ministries. That has been my main reason. To really prosper that I can help ministries. And I was thinking of all the poor, the poor places in Africa, like um, yeah. real Sarah had gone to, how do you call that? Cambodia, Cambodia. and all the poor places. And, <laughs> and I used to say, I don't want to just give $20, 50 I want to be able to give $20,000 to build a building, to build a, you know, that has been on my heart, and that yeah. is what I'm praying to God about. So as you talk about entrepreneur, I just say I'll say that. Yeah. Beautiful. I love it. I did not know that, Angela, and so now now we know. Yeah, yeah it's beautiful. Larry? Good 
know, listening to um, everybody's heart, um, it just puts a, you know, a burden on mine because uh, we were at a we were at a church before, and we were there for about probably about five years, and you know we would always pray for the gifts. You know we would all get together and we were always asking for gifts. Lord, send people in. You know, send these people in so that you know we need we need somebody that can worship. We need some people that can preach. We need somebody that can you know take care of the kids and. You know, we needed youth pastors, and we were always praying. And me and Mary would be in the back, always praying. Uh, before morning service, we would pray. And uh, people would come in. You know, we would watch them, and as soon as they come through the door, we were like, okay, that person right there is a worshiper. The next person would come in, oh, that's the youth pastor we've been praying for. <laughs> but um, as fast as they were coming in, they were going out the door because mm. they weren't fitting in a certain type of setting or a certain type of agenda that was being put that was under that church mm. you know so we would, I would we, and we were just barely you know stepping into the church you know we were trying to figure things out for ourselves and we would ask the Lord like what's going on Lord you know what, what why is this happening you know and later on the Lord started revealing some things to us and we started to understand and um, you know I started seeing things happen but you know Mary wasn't seeing them quite there yet and I felt the Lord telling, telling me just to, um, to wait it out, you know. And at the same time, I was about to walk out of the church and go to a different church. And I was going to leave Mary there. And then the Lord put a scripture in my heart. It said, no, love your wife like the Lord loves the church. And I, what's that mean? Lord, you're giving me the scriptures, but I need you to tell me what this means. You know, and I always throw back the scripture back towards him. Well, show me what this scripture means. And he would show it to me. And uh, he's like, no, you got to be patient with your wife. You got to endure with your wife. You got to love your wife. So I sat in the church for, for many years, you know, waiting for her. I didn't walk out. And um, the time came, Mary comes to me, and she's like, I think the Lord's, uh, you know, telling us to leave. I'm like, well, I've been waiting for <laughs> quite a while, <laughs> you know. But at the same time, I, <laughs> yeah. But at the same time, it was a... Uh, it was a lesson learned, you know. I got to see, and um, I think he used used us to uh, to pray, you know, for many things. And one of the the burdens that's like she mentioned earlier, that's on our hearts, is for the gifts. You know, we look around and we see a lot of gifts. You know, there's a lot of potential in here. And every time I hear y'all talk, you know, it uh, you know, it brings joy to my heart because um, there's a lot of potential in y'all. A lot of potential, and I thank the Lord that uh, that He lets me see, you know, just a glimpse of what He sees, you know, through His heart. And um, one of the things that uh, there, there's been a lot of confirmation, you know, spoken today. We spoke about the pyramids being upside down. I remember going up to the altar many times, and um, you know, always had this this thing in my heart. I would well. I'm going to go up, Lord, and I'm going to give everything I got to you. And then the next following, we will come around and, okay, Lord, I'm going to give this up to you. And it would just be a random thing, you know. We will confess your sins. I'm going to go confess my sins, Lord. And it would just keep on going in the cycle. And uh, I would always go towards the pastor. And it's, okay, well, the pastor right here is going to pray, pray for me and everything's going to be fine. And the Lord stopped me because I got tired of going up there. And I was like, well, Lord, I keep on going, but it's the same situation. You know, nothing's changing. He was like, well, look at me. You know, why, why do you keep going to the man? <laughs> and, and I'm like, what? He said, yeah, pray to me. You know, and it caught me off guard. And at that moment, I kind of looked around. And it was like, well, I think this whole thing's supposed to be backwards. You know, I think we're supposed to be the other way around. Yeah. Kind of like you were saying. And uh, that, that stayed in my heart. And... Um, you know, as I thought about it more, and I was like, well, there, there's, a, there's a certain situation, and he brought this to mind about how the people wanted Moses to go up there and speak to him, and uh, nobody wanted to go up, but we all have access to it. You know, and, and somewhere in the structure of the church, that kind of got lost, and the, our, our vision, what we were supposed to be looking at, kind of shifted this way, mm -hmm. you know, and we lost that. 
And they kept on going through generations and generations. And that stayed in my heart. And I would hear certain men speak about it. Not a lot of people speak about it because a lot of people like the platform and like to be elevated on the stool. But certain men would speak about it. Certain humble men, and you, sir, are one of them. You know, your heart is for the people. And, that, and, you, and that's rare. You know, and I think um, you giving yourself up to the Lord and, you know, being that vessel, both of y'all, you know, you start to see and you start to reap and you start to get all the fruit and all the gifts that the Lord is stirring up. And this starts to happen. Yeah. You know, the heart, the knits, starts knitting together. And then you start hearing that beat you know, that the Lord has. And one of the things that um, I agree with you is about the wealth. I went to a meeting yesterday, and it's nothing but pastors, and it's funny because um, we've, been, we've been fellowshipping with these people. And uh, we're not pastors, but for some reason, we're always in this group, you know, and we go, and, um, and it's funny because they're all scattered all around the states. So there's this thing with pastors. You know, if, you, if a pastor goes up and he starts speaking to the congregation, everybody's eyes is focused on them because there's a little trend, you know, that they say, oh, don't go stealing my sheep. You know, but we all know that the Lord's our shepherd, right? But um, they would ask us, you know, are, are y'all guys pastors? Where do y'all pastor at? We're like, we're not pastors. You know, so that kind of gives us access to go in and fellowship with the congregation. We're able to sit. And we're able to communicate and, you know, in fellowship. And we go to a different state. Oh, where do you guys pastor that? Oh, we don't pastor. You know, so we have access now. We can go visit, you know. And there's others that are like, oh, don't go stealing my sheep, you know. Some, some, not all of them. But um, we took advantage of that. You know, we took advantage of that. And every, everywhere that we go, in a different church, we honor the pastor, but we're always looking, you know, who's back there? And we go in fellowship with that person. And we always tell them, if you invite us to your home, we're going to show up. You know, so <laughs> be careful when you invite us to your house, you know, because we we'll randomly show up. It might be the middle of the night. Hey, you invited us. <laughs> we're there. So we're all, we, that's, um, that's one of our hearts that when we do visit, we're always looking at the congregation because... Like you said, that's where it's at. You know, that's where, that's where it happens. And uh, back to uh, the wealth, we had went to the, I went to the meeting yesterday, and a couple of the the pastors had gotten sick, and their church wasn't able to be uh, functioning the way it was for a couple of months because of the finances. And uh, one of the pastors got up, and he's like, uh, he ma he made a comment that kind of stuck with me. He's like, a church shouldn't be established under one person. It should be a group. You know, that way it can still survive when he's speaking about finances. You know, it can still survive one or two months, you know, regardless of what happens. Um, so, yeah, the wealth, you know, that's uh, heavy on, on my heart, too, that um, we should be able to give to these churches and help them survive. Because not only does the, does the pastor or, you know, the ones that are carrying the burden, it's also the people that are within that building also that are you know, getting together and gathering and we don't know their financial situations, you know, especially nowadays. Yeah. But uh, one of the things is, yeah, wealth and, um, you know, I just wanted to share that. I really don't know. We're kind of like thinking about, we've been talking about a little business here and there. We don't know what it's going to evolve to. But behind that agenda is for the church. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so just wanted to share that. It's good stuff, man. It's powerful stuff. Amen. All right, I think that's... Oh, Gregory, you got something? Oh, that's a no. All right, cool. All right, well, would you hop up here then? Oh, Jim? Have you been listening to what people are saying? I know you have. I see a theme, and it's not a theme that we see very often. We're a safe place. We are a safe place, and we need to practice that. When people come to our home, 
many times they, they come in and they go, wow, this is, this is peaceful. I go, yeah, we don't have any kids. <laughs> but it, it's way more than that. It's way more than that. Our homes are a safe place. That's what God's purpose is for our homes, to be a safe place. So that when people come in, they feel safe. When people feel safe with us, because we're vulnerable, they're going to feel safe, and they're going to open up. And that doesn't just happen here in the congregation. It needs to happen in our homes. And we need to practice having people in our homes just to be safe. And if they've got problems, don't tell them about their problems. Tell them about the good things God has for them. Tell them God's got the answer for the problems. Look at us. We're nothing. But God is everything. Amen. And he's got the answer to your problems. Amen. You just need to ask him. Because that's how much he loves you. It's good stuff, yeah? There was, um, I think it may have been the last HCA that we had here. It was a lady that um, Chris and I were talking. Angela was talking to her, and then we started talking to her. I don't remember her name, but she, um, she started just telling us a lot of stuff about um, her family and her marriage and the church that she goes through and everything. And Chris was sharing with her um, just our personal testimony and what we've gone through and even you know what we still go through. And uh, she was so blown away and she's like, oh my gosh, like, we have to come sit down and talk with you. And we were like, I mean, it's not just us. Like you can talk to anybody here and, and experience what you're experiencing with us. It's not just here, it's with anybody here. You could, you could have that. And she so wanted to come, and she made the comment about, I don't know if my husband would come, because it was, it was very personal information she was sharing. And, but even though it was personal, it's nothing that a lot of us have not gone through. Yeah. Yeah. And I just thought, man, this lady, she needed us. And I don't mean us, I mean us. She needed us, and she wanted us. You could see it. But I think she never came back, or she hasn't come back. And I think that she hasn't because her husband didn't experience that. When you're out in the world, what we have here, it's not normal, <laughs> you know? It's not normal. We don't have cliques. We don't have, you know, pss, 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 about people. It's, it's just not happening here, thank God. And I, I felt like, you know, this, this thing has been in my mind. I'm like, Lord, why do I need to share this? And I feel like we just need to remember that. When people come in, I know you guys embrace, but just keep that in your thought, I think is what I want to say, that we just, even though they resist, we still take them by the hand and say, no, no, no. You know, like, it's like when you have a child and you're like, this is good for you, take this, <laughs> come here. It's, don't force them, but just love them through it because people need what we have. And I love, love, love that it's not just this, because this isn't always great. <laughs> it's not always great. <laughs> it's not. Oh, sometimes Chris is talking and I'm like, shut your mouth. Stop, Stop talking about me. <laughs> and I know y'all sit see me sitting over there and I'm just smiling. <laughs> if you only knew the thoughts that are in here. Anyways. <laughs> We're such a good body, man. We are, and people need us. They need what we have. And I love hearing your hearts because you guys want to share it. You want to change people's lives. Yeah. One thing that stood out to me so much when I, when I first met Mary, I saw this girl, and, and I'm probably using ugly words here, but hear my whole story. <laughs> I saw Mary weaseling her way and weaseling into the flags and weaseling in here, but it wasn't the heart of a weasel. It was the heart of God. This girl didn't care. She was going to pray for somebody. She was going to change an atmosphere. You could tell she wanted to see somebody's life change. You saw it. Because I was watching her. She's watching this person, and I'm watching Mary. She needed this lady to change or have an encounter. or That's beautiful, right? Because you know women, right? How many of you meet a, a woman, and they do this number? Oh, how are you? I'm like, girl, I'm right here. <laughs> but that right there, that's what women need. They need to see that heart in all of us. And we all have it. I'm just talking about Mary and that beautiful heart that she has. So 
I just want to share that with you. Amen. Yeah. So is this is this been good? Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Yeah. So now is the now that it's all out in the on the ground and on the table, now we get to try to put it together. And it's not easy. Um, and it's not laid out. It's a road less traveled. So we, we, we have to figure out how we, how we accomplish these things. Um, and it's not so much that um, we're very different, right? We're all very different. But we have the same spirit, Holy Spirit runs and guides us and leads us. And so it's up to us to be completely in tune with him to learn how to move, how to pray for this or how to support this or support that or what. You know, we're all very, very different, right? Um, like you go in John and Zoe's house and they've got a, a whole wall of all of artwork, that, of her artwork and stuff, right? You may not be an artwork person and... You may not hang stuff on your wall like that, and that's okay. Like, does that make sense? Like, we have a bunch of stuff from my grandmother and my mom that, you know, actual paintings, but we're not going to, we're not that type to hang those things like that. But that doesn't mean that we don't work well together or that we're not amazing friends with those differences, right? John's really tall, and I'm not, and that's okay. (laughs) He lets me know all the time. I'm vertically challenged. (laughs) But those challenges do not hinder the relationship (laughs) horizontally between my brother and I, right? Even Ryan Har, they had to leave, but he he was laughing at me the other day. (laughs) Small man stuff, but that's okay. (laughs) I can't thank you all enough for sharing your heart. And I know we're just starting And what I'm trying to say is that the road to get through these things, it's not going to be the simplest, easiest thing. There's going to be some challenges of how and when and what does it look like and on and on. But we'll get through it together because we're going somewhere that hasn't been before. We're doing something that hasn't been done before. And it's going to be beautiful. So would you all stand with me real quick? And I know, um, is Tabitha here today? No? No? Tabitha, what's that? Oh, she's online. I can't read those. So <laughs> Tabitha's online. You know, um, I really felt like Tabitha was going to have some ideas to share, some things that's been on her heart. She's just awesome. And, and uh, you know, just get around her and watch what she does. She can come in and change a lot of things. I'll leave that there because I'll, 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 I'll talk to you later, Tabitha. But... Um, There is a grace that is over us for accomplishing the impossible because we serve the God of the impossible. He's not just one that tries to figure it out and think, well, maybe this. He doesn't have to try anything. He is the God of the impossible. It's real simple, right? And we are the ecclesia of him. And so... There's nothing too difficult. There's nothing out of reach. There's things right now we don't know or understand how to accomplish, but he already does. And so there's a grace for you and I. Remember, we've been talking about stepping into capacity. There's a grace here for you and I to be able to do that. And so however you get in a receiving mode, let's do that here. And Father, we just come to you in this moment together. Raquel and I, we speak over this entire body, all of our people here at CORE, those watching online uh, right now, and we speak right now the opening of our hearts, the opening of our understanding, the opening of revelation, uh, uh, the grace that will bring all of these desires, uh, these strategies Um, these problem-solving things, Father, that that grace would come right now and begin to work in our hearts. We open ourselves up 
for that grace to flow as we step into what you have placed on our hearts to do and accomplish. We step into that right now, and I pray for every person here to receive whatever their need may be. Whatever they need in understanding, whatever they need in strategy, whatever they need in peace, whatever they need in strength, whatever they need to accomplish the desire and the driving thing in their heart, we speak it over them right now in the name of Jesus. We declare your goodness, but we decree that right now, we decree that these desires and these dreams these heart implantations that you have put in these people, that they will come to pass. And they will come to pass with excellence. They will come to pass with much fruit. We will see the fruit of the heart of your people because this group of people is pursuing you and nothing else. And so, Father, we thank you. Lord, we just seal this with the Holy Spirit and we decree it in the name of of Jesus. Amen and amen. Lydia didn't even touch about dreams. We talk about that a lot with her, but we're going to we're going to see some stuff come about um with some dream interpretation ministry. Not just sit there and interpret dreams. We don't do that. We prophesy through the dream. Amen. And it's not even about the dream, it's about them and the Father and and we're going to see some stuff with that come about here. So we love you all. God bless you very much. For those of you online, thank you for joining us. I know this has been really different, a little long, and that's okay. Uh, it sounds like all of y'all got a little preach in you, and we'll have to, <laughs> we'll have to correct that next time, but I'm just kidding. <laughs> we love you all. God bless you. Be safe. We love you all.